So now we'll discuss the third rule of the incidence of taxation. So third rule states the distribution of tax burden depends upon the price elasticities of demand and supply. So this thing says that higher price elasticity of demand that implies lower burden on consumers and higher burden on producers. Similarly, higher price elasticity of supply indicates lower burden on producers and higher burden on consumers. So here we will show it with the help of any kind of indirect taxation. So first we will start with the incidence that the producers are being taxed. That means indirect tax is imposed on the producers. And now we will show that higher the price elasticity of demand, lower will be the burden on the consumers and vice versa. So, here in horizontal axis we are measuring the output, in vertical axis we are measuring the price. So initially we consider that this is the supply curve S and the demand curve here is very steep. That means price elasticity of demand is very low. So now initially the equilibrium point is A. The price in the market is OP1 and quantity market clearing level of output is OQ1. Now we consider that government is imposing a tax on the producers. So the government is imposing a tax on the producers. So here we can see that this T per unit is the volume of tax. T is the volume of tax per unit. So initially what we see the market is subject to an excess demand situation to the extent Q star Q1. So what will happen here? Due to this excess demand Q star Q1 is the volume of excess demand. So due to this volume of excess demand, the price will start to rise. And once the price starts to rise, there will be extension of supply and there will be contraction of demand. So finally, new market equilibrium will be attained at point. We consider it B. So P1, P2 is the increase in price. So this is the rise in price due to indirect taxation. So if we do it here that F is the per unit burden of tax. Out of this AG is the burden. So we can see that burden of consumers is the amount AG and burden on producers is the rest amount. So AF is the per unit volume of tax wherever the price rises by the volume AG and GF is the 
burden on the consumers. So as the price elasticity of demand is very low, the consumer, the producers can transfer a huge burden to the consumers. And now, in the same case, we can, in the same diagram, we can use, we can show that higher the price elasticity of demand, lower will be the burden of tax, tax on the consumers. So here just I am erasing the demand curve, we will introduce another demand curve. Now they are the same supply curve, same volume of taxation, but now I will consider that the demand curve is flatter. That means price elasticity of the demand is highly elastic. So here our demand curve is D1. So in this case what we will see? The same mechanism will be followed initially. The excess demand is to the volume Q star Q1. So whenever the price will start to rise here, demand responds very fast to the rise in price. So the in new equilibrium will be attained at point B dash. And the new equilibrium price will be P2 dash and equilibrium level of quantity, market quantity, uh, the market clearing level of output will be OQ1 dash. So in this case, what do you see? That this is a, in this case, what do you see? The producer bears the maximum burden FG. FG dash is the burden. So in this case, burden borne by the producers that is given as G dash A and burden shifted to the consumers is A G dash. So this is the total volume of taxation as price elasticity of demand is very high the producers can transfer only a g dash share of burden to the consumers and the producers have to bold that g dash if volume this is the share of tax per unit that is borne by the producers so here we can find that higher the price elasticity of demand lower will be the burden of indirect taxation on the consumers and higher burden will be borne by the producers. Now we will take the opposite case regarding the price elasticity of supply. Now we will consider the standard linear demand curve in both cases. that this D is the demand curve. So first we will consider that supply is highly inelastic and next we will consider that supply is highly elastic. And we will prove that higher the price elasticity of supply, higher will be the tax burden, share of tax burden transferred towards the consumers. So initially we consider price elasticity of supply is very low. So that's we get very steep supply curve. Now let us consider that this is the tax burden on the producers. So supply curve will shift rightward. So we get new supply curve S dash. So initially the equilibrium level of output was equilibrium point was A determined by the intersection of demand curve D and supply curve S. So initially what do you see that the price is OP1 quantity demanded is 
the market clearing level of output is OQ1. So now in this case we will find there will be a supply shortage or excess demand to the extent Q star Q1. So once this is there is the excess supply, sorry excess demand, the price will start to rise. So as the price starts to rise, there will be contraction of demand and on the other hand there will be extension of supply. So this process will be continued unless we find a new equilibrium point B and price is high at P2. So quantity falls, price rises. So here what we see, the total burden of tax is AF and here AG is the burden. So AG indicates the rising price which is exactly equal to P1, P2. So AG indicates the burden transferred to the consumers and GF is the burden borne by the producers. So in this case we can find that the, this is the AF is the total burden out of which AG the share AG can be transferred towards the consumers and maximum burden is borne by the producers here. So in this case price elasticity of demand supply is very low and that's why supply responds less to price and hence there is a small rise in price. Demand response quick. Uh, demand response here quicker than the supply. So now we will consider the case in which supply curve is highly elastic and now we will find that the consumer the, there is more burden on the consumers and less burden on the producers. So now I will use the flatter supply curves. So we will start with the same price level. So this is my initial supply curve and this is my new supply curve after imposition of tax. So vertical distance between these two supply curves indicate the total burden of taxes and per unit, total burden of indirect tax per unit. So initially the price was OP1 output level was OQ1 and initially A was the equilibrium point. Now what we will see that again there will be excess, excess demand in the market and the demand supply interaction the new price will be determined by the intersection of new supply curve and demand curve. So new price of the commodity is O. Here I give it P2 dash and equilibrium quantity is Q2 dash. So here what I find that AF is the burden of taxation. Out of this AG dash is transferred towards the consumers in form of increased price. So in this case what we can see that AG is the burden shifted to the consumers in form of the higher price and this is a G dash, G dash F is the burden borne by the producers. So in this case what we find price elasticity of supply is more so that's why the producer is being able to transfer the major share of burden towards the consumers and producer bears are less part of the burden. So from here in so in this case what we have found we have found for the four last four diagrams we have proved that Whenever an indirect tax is imposed on the producers, 
the volume or the share of the burden that can be transferred towards the consumers is inversely related to price elasticity of demand and directly related to the price elasticity of supply. So higher the price elasticity of demand, the producer can lower will be the burden of the total volume, total burden that can be shifted towards the consumers and higher the price elasticity of supply, the larger share of the burden can be shifted towards the consumers. So all these examples we have taken whenever the producer is being taxed. That means the government is imposing any kind of indirect tax on the producers. So now we will consider the case whenever the consumers are being taxed. And equally we will find that higher the price elasticity of demand, higher will be the share of burden that the consumers can transfer towards the producers. And higher is the price elasticity of supply, lower will be the share of burden that the consumers can transfer towards the producers. So now we will start with the case of indirect tax imposed on the consumers. So first we will discuss about the price elasticity of demand. So here we will first start with the, this is the supply curve. Here initially we will consider when the demand curve is, demand is highly inelastic. That means we will consider steeper demand curves. This is the demand curve. So initially equilibrium is at point E. Market clearing output is P1. So price is OP1, market clearing output is OQ1. So now we consider that this is the burden of taxation. So we will consider a new demand curve. D dash. So we can say that EF is the burden of taxation per unit imposed on the consumers. So as per the demand, there will be here there will be excess, the day there will be decline in demand, and the market will be subject to the excess demand at this volume. So definitely the price will start to fall, and here the new price will be determined by the intersection of the demand curve D dash and supply curve S. So E1 is the new equilibrium point. So market price is, sorry, this is E2. Market price is OP2. Market clearing level of output is OQ2. So EF is the total burden of taxation. What is the decline in price? P1, P2. So we can write that EG is the decline in price. So here we can see total burden, total burden is EF. Consumers bear, consumers bear GF because and Producers bear EG because EG is the decline in the price. The burden of the taxation and consumer is shifted towards the producer in form of the decreased price. So in this case what we see there is a very small decline in price that means consumers can shift a very small part of the total burden of taxation towards the consumers, towards the producers because of less price elasticity of demand. 
So in the same diagram, with same supply curve, we will consider the case when the demand is highly elastic. So we will start with the same price, same point of initial point of equilibrium and we will find the, so here we will take a much flatter demand curve. So this is my initial demand curve D. So initial equilibrium is point is A. Price is OP1 and output is OQ1. So now we'll consider the same volume of indirect tax on the consumers. So demand curve with new demand curve will be D1. And here we can say that AC is the volume of taxes and per unit. Now definitely the price will decline and new equilibrium will be determined by the intersection of new demand curve D1 and supply curve AC. So o Q1 dash is the new equilibrium level of output and OP1 dash is the new price. So we can do it that AF. So declining price is equals to AF. So here what we see total burden of taxation is AC. The declining price means the burden shifted towards the producers. So AF is the share of the burden to the producers. And the rest amount FC is borne by the consumers. So from here it is clear that higher the price elasticity of demand, higher will be the burden that the consumers can shift towards the producers whenever the government imposes some tax on the consumers. And now we will prove that higher the price elasticity of supply, lower burden can be, lower will be the share of burden that the consumers can shift towards the producers. So here we will start with, this is the initial demand curve D and this is the new demand curve D1. So this is the volume of per unit of taxation. So initially we considered that the supply is highly inelastic. So this is the supply curve. So initial equilibrium point is A. And price is OP1, output is OQ1. Now, whenever the demand curve, the tax is imposed to the extent we can call AB, the demand curve shifts from D to D1. And we will find a new equilibrium point that output is Q1 star, price is OP1 star. So, what do we see here? That AC is the Decline P1, P1 star is the decline in price which is exactly equal to AC. So AC is the share of burden to the producers. And CB is the burden borne by the consumers and total burden is AB. So in this case we see that price elasticity of supply is very low and that's why producers bears the maximum, producers are bearing the maximum share of the burden. That means consumers can easily transfer 
larger share of the burden towards the producers. Now we will take check the case if the price elasticity of demand is sorry price elasticity of supply is very high. So initially we will start with the same equilibrium point but here we will find that price elasticity of supply is very high. So initial price and quantity are same but due to this excess supply what will happen sorry excess demand in the market <coughs> sorry due to that excess supply in the market the price will start to fall and new equilibrium price will be P1 P2. So if we say AB is the total burden of tax, P1, P2 is the decline in price. So A, AF is the burden of taxation that the producers, that the consumers can transfer towards the producers. So in this case what we will find, we will find that AB is the total burden. AF is the share of burden shifted to the producers and AB is the share of burden borne by the consumers. So in this part we have seen that higher the price elasticity of supply lower will be the share of burden that the consumers can transfer towards the producers in the case of indirect taxation. So from here we can conclude that higher the price elasticity of demand lower will be the share of burden to the consumers and higher burden towards the producers and vice versa for price elasticity of supply.